proud of the effort of our guys. Um, certainly not always a pretty game, but um, a, a really good team win against a, a very athletic and talented Notre Dame team. Um, certainly, um, you know, Connor with the points that he had, um, had a tremendous day, but so proud of him. The seven assists, just trying to make guys around him better and keeping his head up and looking for his teammates. And uh, Justin obviously did a really good job at the X of, of just giving us some extra possessions. and. And certainly Adam just doing what Adam does. He chips in a couple goals, but he does so many little things for us. And I think there are other guys I could mention, but again, at the end of the day, with this team, there are so many guys that, just like these three, that are working their butts off and, and doing little things for us to get a win like this. And, and that's kind of what you need um, to, to obviously beat Notre Dame, because that's a, a, a great team. Turp Talk is brought to you by Viner Four Gates Consulting. Call Viner Four Gates for all of your IT needs. In the D.C. Baltimore area, you could reach us at 301-251-2900 or on the web at www.vinerforgates.com. Questions, guys? Connor, what was working for you and what enabled this team specifically to have so much offensive success against Notre Dame today? Uh, right, I think it was the uh, full week of prep we had. The scout guys gave us a great look all week. They did a tremendous job, day in, day out. And I think we just are such an unselfish group. We're you know we're growing each day, so we're trying to find that complete game. So I don't think we had it yet today, but I thought we uh, played great together. Adam, you seem to be in the right place at the right time today, especially on the slate steal and a, a couple goals and everything. Uh, how'd you how'd you feel about the game today? Also playing both ways, sort of. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, just playing off guys like Connor and Jared and, you know, all those guys down there, um, you know, you really get the opportunity to kind of, you know, work off guys that are drawing a lot of attention and, uh, you know, being able to capitalize on some plays that, you know, sometimes you won't get if you don't have guys like that. So um, I think that really helped. And then, you know, the scout team really emphasizes, you know, a lot of what uh, Notre Dame was doing all week. And, uh, you know, we kind of played that role and we ensured that you know if we're gonna go out there with the second line obviously and uh you know we're gonna play our game we're gonna play uh the way we do cutter have you emphasized becoming more fast or has it come more naturally this season uh no i don't think so i'm trying to just let the gum uh, the, the game come to me so i'm trying to find whatever i can do to better this offense whether that's facilitating on dodging or whether that's being the secondary dodge, whether that's feeding. So I'm doing whatever I can as the older guy, me and Tim sort of have to facilitate as well as communicate what we're doing uh, on the offensive end. Connor, can you describe how when you're running one direction, you're able to look back over your shoulder and throw a accurate 25 yard pass to someone that's open for a shot? Uh, I think that's just, uh, just days of practice. Honestly, I've played with these guys since the fall. They're just such great talents and they find just such great uh, skip lanes, so it's credit to them. But uh, we just play throughout the week. We try to play, obviously the scout team tries to play that Notre Dame role. And uh, when, when I'm dodging, I, I always know where my guys are gonna be. So I thought they did a great job. Do you feel like as you were having success throughout the game, it was possible to take maybe a time to risk your passes? Uh, I don't think so. I don't try to sort of change my game or take riskier uh, passes. We always play the percentages here. So uh, I try to stick to that and uh, you know, just stick to the right place. And what stood out to you in terms of just preparation? You mentioned the scout team. What was different about kind of this week of prep? I know there's extra time going into it, especially for the offense. Yeah, I think we understood the animal that we were facing. Uh, obviously, Notre Dame's a great team, and uh, you know our scout team really embraced the role. And I think that really, you know, just watching film, we saw how they got after it, and uh, I think our scout team really embraced it. You now the whole week, every single day, sometimes they were beating us up, and uh, you know it really, you know, it really worked out for us on game day. Coach, the history of Notre Dame Maryland's always been a tough, low-scoring, hard-fought game. This one started off completely different. Did you um, feed on that? on those past games to change things a little? Um, you know, certainly every every year you play somebody, you know, you're, you're looking at who they played and they had two games to go off of and then you'll go back and watch some, some prior games. And um, you certainly, my feeling is you learn, you know, game to game, but you learn year to year. Um, you know, we certainly will change a little bit, but you still have your core kind of culture and your DNA, you know, things that you do. And uh, defensively, Notre Dame, Jerry Byrne does such a good job with that defense. Um, so, you know, philosophically, the, their parts may change, and they certainly have some, some great parts this year. 
um, but kind of what they do doesn't change a ton. Um, certainly there'll be some subtleties. So we look back at last year and candidly, that was a game that probably, I think for a lot of the offensive guys, um, one that we probably were most disappointed with last year. I mean, you only score four goals um, and we just, we got stubborn, we got a little frustrated um, and give credit to Notre Dame. They kind of, you know, we, we kind of played into their hands and, and we really struggled. And again, that's a credit to them. Um, but again, we look back and we don't dwell on things like that. We try to learn from maybe some of our mistakes. And I thought our kids did a great job of going, okay, this didn't work. Um, let's try this this year. And I think that helped. Um, it's funny how the tone got set early. Both teams scored, I think, on their first two possessions. Um, and all of a sudden that, the game kind of took on a, a different light. So. Um, you know, with us, I think Justin getting us so many extra uh, face-offs, um, that's a huge thing. Um, just get you in rhythm a little bit more, um, especially in a team that's so good defensively. And, and even in the first quarter, we took nine shots. All nine were on goal. Now, five saves, four goals. But, you know, we started off and we were putting the ball on net, and you kind of need to do that. You know, you, you only get so many chances against them, so you got to make them count. Coach, Connor's goal right before halftime to extend the lead from 7-5 to five to 8-5. to five. How big was that going into the locker room, getting that extra momentum, getting that extra goal, and what was a tight game? Yeah, those, those goals at the end of periods are always huge. Um, you know, we try to uh, protect against them, and we always try to see if we can get one. Um, you know, I thought Coach uh, Ruppert, we talked about a couple different things, but he did a great job of kind of putting something together. Um, we had a number of different options uh, that we could have gone with. Uh, the kids made a really good decision. And, you know, Connor in front of the goal, um, even with a little bit farther out, he's got such good range and he's got great velocity. Um, so that's a pretty good opportunity for us. Um, certainly there were some other things that we could have looked for there, but um, we have so much confidence in Connor that if he wants to take that shot, we'll, we'll take it any day of the week. Justin. Justin, what was your thought process heading into this one, particularly given how unique Notre Dame is with their double pull on the wings and obviously like setting a physical tone from the first base off on? Yep, yep. So we had uh, like this whole week, like these guys have said, we, we had a game plan and we stuck to it and just played our game. And, and you know, the credit all goes to Coach Tills, Coach Barbrich, um, and especially the other face off guys. I mean, like an, any given day, we're, like, we're going to have a good game. Um, today was my day. Austin's had his days. Everyone's had their days. and, and like I said, it's a credit to them. When you're facing an opponent who does have two long pulls on the wings, do you feel more pressure to win the ground ball yourself? You know, that was that was actually like part of our game plan. Um, like our, our wings do a great job, and and um, I I was good on the ground today. I thought and, and had a little more confidence than other games, and and you know it worked out. We uh, came out with the win. That's all that really matters. Justin, could you describe just your experiences through these first few games and how you felt that your success today impacted the offense as a whole? Um, can you repeat that? Story? Yeah, sorry. Just describe your experiences, just kind of getting integrated in the program, what it's been like for you, yeah. and how you feel this uh, your success today impacted today's offensive performance. Yeah, I mean, um, at first, um, obviously, this is an amazing program with amazing guys, and that made my transition here um, so so easy. And and you know, it was pretty pretty seamless. They like so welcoming. Um, Great group of guys, and then um, so what was the second part? Sorry. Just how you feel like your success today contributed to the overall offensive success? I mean, it's like I said, it's the team as a whole. Like the scout is where, where our work is really done is in the week in preparation, and, and like I said, everyone does a great job with with that, and I just put me and everyone else in a great position to succeed here today. John, can you describe the defensive game plan, particularly given that their two leading scorers were held scoreless and Brennan Gleason did not take a shot? Um, yeah, we, um, you know, they're pretty scary on offense when you when you put on the film. Just they have some some guys that can do some you know some dynamic things. Like you saw, uh, Garnsey doesn't need much room. Um, you know, he is definitely a playmaker, um, and he can do some things that other guys can't. You just can't really simulate that in practice. Um, Wins so good off the ball, so he puts stress on you on the inside. Um, and then you know you kind of look at what Cospel does and Gleason. Those two guys like are bears and. Even if you have poles on them, you know they can run by poles, and that opens you up. And if it opens you up, now all of a sudden, you know Mikey's cutting you inside, and Willits is another good off-ball guy. I thought Pierre Byrne played great for him today. Um, you know he stepped up and made a couple plays. Um, you know they get him involved a little bit more, and now it's one more guy. And, and let a lot of people talk about Pierre, but um, he's a veteran guy. You could see late in the game, he's really poised. 
Um, and Drake is another guy I think is going to be a really good player for them. He had a couple assists today. So um, Jesse Bernhardt did a really good job just in terms of getting us organized and getting us prepared. We had a little couple breakdowns early, but I thought the guys responded. Uh, I thought Danny bailed us out in that second quarter. Um, they had some looks, but he really, I mean, he had six A's in one quarter. Um, and a couple of them point blank, and, and that kind of allowed us to kind of hang on to the lead and getting that goal before half was huge. John, do you, do you think you guys got caught ball watching a little bit on defense? Um, you know, they're they're so good. You know, we, we wanted to slide and, uh, you know, to certain guys at certain places and certain times. So if you do that, um, it's going to open you up. And uh, they got some looks for sure. Um, there were a couple times we were close, um, but close isn't good enough. Uh, there was one right at the end of the third. We were there. And, uh, you know, uh, Ryder makes a great play, play. He throws it backside. I think Wynn dunked it. Um, and, again, close isn't good enough with a team like this. Um, so, yeah, we, we definitely, you know, had some, some breakdowns, and they made us pay. And uh, that's one of the reasons why you're, you're trying to do a lot of the drills and get your sticks in lanes and be buttoned up. Um, but if you're going to slide, there are some windows. Um, but I thought um, a lot of times I thought our guys did a pretty good job of rotating. But we're still a work in progress down there. Um, you know, we have some guys like Roman Puglisi and – um, Drew Harrison, who I thought for their for their first four or five games here, they've done a pretty good job for us. Time for two more. Jack, you, uh, Connor's performance was the first uh, nine-point performance since Mike Chan and Chuck in 14. Can I see some similarities in their game? Can you describe any similarities that you see in the game? Um, a lot of similarities. Uh, I think just the way they're wired, just very poised guys, high IQ guys. Um, you know, the guys that make people around them better. Um, but, uh, you know, if I was going to compare him right now, like he reminds me a lot of 214, you know, where Mike kind of, you know, was up top a lot. He moves around. Uh, he's very smooth. Um, you know, he doesn't force the plays, but he'll take them when they're there. Um, and he makes guys around him better. And, and Mike was like having an extra coach out there. And, and that's what, you know, having Connor's like, you know, he'll come off and we'll just talk about some things. Hey, what'd you see? What are your thoughts there? Um, and, and the moment's never too big, but he doesn't make it about himself. Um, and, and that's just a credit to who he is. Coach, what is it about just the way this offense is structured that allowed a guy like Connor to have a day like he had today, but also allow other guys to contribute and drive to the goal when the opportunity is there? Well, I think, you know, Connor talked about it. You have a group of guys that are unselfish, and then we have a number of guys that just, you know, they have a good skill set and they're willing to share the ball. They're will, willing to set picks and move and cut and just do kind of some thankless things. Um, I thought a guy who played really well today, Colin Giblin, has, has had a great senior year so far. And uh, 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 Will Snyder has been excellent so far. Those guys have done a really good job. They don't hear a lot about them, but just their poise and their ability, um, they make everybody else around them better. And certainly give credit to, as these guys, our scout defense did a pretty good job. And, and Coach Rep spent so much time trying to get these guys in good spots and put together good game plans. And, and I think these guys would agree that's, Again, it's just a good team effort. Um, but when you got a guy like Connor and other people have to kind of think and look at him, it's Jared, same way. It opens up things for other guys. And I think our guys have a good sense of their role uh, and play into their roles. All right, guys, thank you. Thank you.